Hey, I'm Anthony Cafiero, Solutions Engineer here at Sigma, and today I'm going to be showing you how I built a portfolio modeling application with AI in Sigma. Let's start by taking a look at the finished application. My portfolio analytics application is meant to provide an analyst with a one-stop shop for all things analysis and action on their portfolios. They can use Sigma's exploration capabilities and visualizations to drill and explore, even on top of billions of records of detail. All build off of a live connection back to the cloud data warehouse. This way my data stays secure, I inherit permissions directly from the warehouse, and my data remains up to date while I analyze. Ultimately though, these insights are going to help inform the action we take on our portfolios. In this application, Sigma allows me to create scenario models in which we can adjust the portfolio's holdings and assess potential impact on risk. And because Sigma makes writeback seamless and secure, our scenario models are automatically written back to the cloud data warehouse, reducing potential friction to kick off those downstream processes. To make this process even more seamless for the analysts, I also wanted to give them the ability to pull up a research report on the fly, consolidating the latest recommendations, key indicators, and news so that they can make a more informed decision when rebalancing their holdings. With a simple click of a security, I can retrieve a consolidated report that provides me with all of this helpful information. Here we're using AI to augment the user's experience. Without this ability, I would probably be switching tabs, reaching out to other teams, all to provide me with this critical information. Instead, I can just leverage AI to generate this on the fly so that I can continue on in my own process. Once we've taken a look at the report, we can make our proposed adjustments, save, and continue on in our analysis. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how I built this application with AI. Once I jump into edit mode here, there's gonna be four main tabs that are playing in this workflow. The first is the home page. This is where our users are interacting with the data. This is the tab we just saw. The next two are gonna be modals. These are pop-up windows that, one, display the loading window while we wait for the warehouse LLM to return the report, and two, the final output. The last tab is gonna be where we store all of our controls and prompts. These controls are what gets passed into the prompt to add context like QSIP and security. Here we also see the final prompt before it gets executed. Note that the QSIP and security are already included. We also have a copy of this prompt just in case we need to make any changes in the future. Now let's head back to the home page to see how this all gets orchestrated. To create the most seamless experience for our users, we're using Sigma's action framework and the live connection to the data warehouse. These actions are what opens up the pop-up modals, generates the prompts, and executes the warehouse LLM function that we're using for this use case. Our action is gonna be triggered off of the selection of a security. So if I click on this element here and look at the actions up in the right-hand corner, we can see all the different sequences available. This is the one we're gonna take a look at here on select of security name, and you're gonna see the six separate actions that are happening when we click on security. First one's gonna be opening that modal. This is the loading modal that shows us that nice animation while we wait for the warehouse LLM to return the report. Then we're gonna be setting our context. What's happening here is we're taking the QSIP and the security name for the record that we're selecting on, and we're setting those controls that we just saw on that last page. We then set the prompt. This is where we're gonna actually see the prompt that we're using in the warehouse function. Here we can see the prompts, we can see the context that we're passing as well, and we can see all of the additional information that we're passing along in this prompt. At a high level, we're stating our intentions, we're being explicit in what we want returned and in what format, and lastly, we pass that important context as well. And then most importantly, we execute the prompt. In this case, we're using Snowflake's complete LLM function, a general purpose function that allows me to interact in a more chat-like way. It also gives me control over what model I want to use. In this case, we are using Mistral Large 2, but there's 25 models in total that we can select from. For this use case, AI is helping the user make a more informed decision without having to leave the workbook, accelerating our time to execution and providing the user some very important context. And because we're using functions and models that are available in the Cloud Data Warehouse, no data is ever leaving the perimeter of Snowflake. The last action here is opening the modal, in which case that's going to show us that return report. So if we go ahead and select on any one of these, we're going to pop up, see that pop-up window with a loading animation, and then in just a moment, it will return that research report. 
So in this short amount of time, I've been able to create a more intelligent portfolio modeling application, which supports my users in making the best decision for their clients. If you want to try it out yourself, we've got free trials on our Sigma website and regular hands-on labs you can attend virtually. Thank you.